Welcome to this week's Hagley History Hangout. At the Hagley Museum and Library, we document the unfolding history of American business and technology and their impact on the world. My name is Sharon Fickeisen, and I am a senior conservation technician at Hagley. Through this series, we will draw on Hagley's extensive research collections to tell you surprising stories about our past. My talk today explores the process of hand bookbinding. Bookbinding consists of sewing, forwarding, covering, and finishing, and successful book repair requires knowledge of these processes. And what better way to learn than to do? In 2005, I began studying under Don Etherington through the American Academy of Bookbinding's Diploma Program in Book Conservation, which combines practical coursework at the bench and independent study. Classes in traditional hand bookbinding technique were held in Don's well-appointed home bookbinding studio and were presented as a progression. Text blocks were prepared and sewn in five traditional styles. They were then forwarded, covered, and finished according to those styles. At the end, each student had five distinct book bindings, all done by hand. First in the progression was sewing structures. A flexible sewing passes through the folds of the gatherings, securing each section to the ones adjacent to it. This process ensures a consecutive and permanent text block unit. A text block is the body of a book consisting of the leaves or sections making up the unit to be bound. We produced text blocks sewn with link stitch on single and double cords, alum tawed thongs, and parchment thongs. In bookbinding, thongs refer to the narrow strips of vellum, leather, or alum tawed skin used in the early days of flexible sewing. Thongs were eventually replaced by cords. This is an unsupported link stitch sewing in progress. The link stitch is an invisible sewing structure as it will not be seen through the covering material. And you can see where the sections are linked together by the sewing. Supported sewing is a method of sewing the sections of a book onto cords or bands with the sewing thread looping completely around the cords. The cords or bands are referred to as raised since they lay on the spine as opposed to flush with the spine and will show after the book is covered. This type of sewing may be done on single or double cords and is one of the strongest forms of hand sewing. A sewing frame is used when books are sewn by hand. It consists of a flat baseboard, two uprights threaded on both ends, a crossbar with two supporting wooden nuts. Tapes, cords, and bands are stretched from the slotted baseboard where they are secured by keys to the crossbar where they are attached to loops. In this image, you see sewing on split alum tawed thongs, which are secured to the frame with blue painter's tape. Yes, we use hammers. Swell is the additional thickness in the spine of a book caused by the sewing thread. When a book is made up of soft paper, the sewing threads will become embedded in the paper when the book is smashed by a hammer or nipped in a press. While excessive swell is undesirable, some swell is required for proper rounding and backing. Forwarding are the steps involved in binding a book up to the covering. Steps include squaring the text block, rounding and backing the spine, preparing and attaching the boards, and applying headbands. Covering is the process of pasting or gluing the leather to a book, drawing it over the spine and boards, and turning it over the edges of the boards at the foredge, head, and tail of the book. Rounding takes place after the spine has been given a light coat of adhesive and is accomplished by means of light hammering along the spine. A book is rounded to help provide, to prevent the spine from falling in, which would result in severe strain on the hinges of the book. It also facilitates the formation of shoulders. Backing is the process of shaping a shoulder on each side of the spine of a text block prior to applying the spine lining material. The shoulders are shaped to accommodate the book boards, which will rest snugly up against them. Whoops. Oh, here we go. The dimension of the shoulders is determined by the thickness of the boards to be used, which in turn is determined by the size and bulk of the book. After the shoulder has been set through rounding and backing, the prepared boards are laced on. Lacing in is the process of attaching the boards to the text block by passing the bands or cords on which the book is sewn through holes punched or cut into the boards. The bands are first frayed out and moistened with paste and then passed through the holes or slots. Next is hand sewing of headbands. 
Sewn headbands are both functional and ornamental bands at the head and tail of a book. When sewn in, the headband reinforces that part of the spine covering that extends beyond the text block. Originally, the headband consisted of a thong core similar to the bands on which the book was sewn, around which the ends of the threads were twisted and then laced into the boards of the book. More commonly, headbands are made with colored embroidery silk, which is wrapped around a paperboard core and then sewn through the text block. These headbands were sewn on alum taut thongs, the same material as the sewing support, and will be laced into the boards. We also use power tools. Book boards are usually shaped, and in an extreme departure from the hand press period, this is often done with a power sander. Chamfering or beveling is done on the outside edge along the head, tail, and fore edge. More aesthetic than functional, the purpose is to remove the clumsy effect of thick boards and create a pleasing tactile quality. The image on the right shows how the boards of a replica 16th century German Gothic binding were shaped with bevels in the center while the corners remained their full thickness. Here we go, covering with leather. The first step is preparing the leather. A template of the book is made showing the height and width of the spine and open boards with allowance for turn-ins. The template is scored onto the leather and then the leather cut to size. Next is pairing, which is the process of thinning leather by cutting away the flesh side. The edges that are to be turned in are beveled using a paring knife. Another option is running the leather through a paring machine, such as a Sharfix. The head and tail require extra pairing as the leather is turned in on itself instead of onto the board. You can see that all the flesh has been pared away at the edge, leaving just the skin. Covering is a multi-step process that must be done before the paste dries. You need to move swiftly but deliberately and gently, so take a deep breath and find your zen. The leather is evenly wetted on the skin side, then pasted on the flesh side. It is folded gently in half and left to sit and marinate for a few minutes while you glue the upper board and spine of the book. The leather is then pasted out again, which ensures even distribution of moisture and paste as the flesh will have absorbed some of the first paste coating. Now you lay the glued upper board onto the corresponding side of the leather, then glue out the lower board, which is now facing you, and wrap the leather around, gently pressing to ensure adhesion. The book is now placed on its four edges while you work the spine. This is done with the heels of your hands. Starting in the center of the spine, gently but firmly pull the leather down and slightly toward you so that it hugs the raised bands. When you reach the top, flip the book around and work the other side. Turn-ins are done next. Excess leather at the corner is trimmed away so that the material meets without overlap on the inside of the board. The four edges are then turned in. Next comes turning in the spine. With the boards laid, boards laid flat and the text block supported upright, the head and tail leather is turned in on itself and shaped. Once all edges have been turned in, the corners are realigned and squared, the spine bands get defined with band nippers, and the end cap gets its final shaping. And then you breathe. Finishing is the art of polishing, lettering, and embellishing the leather covering. Here you see an assortment of finishing tools heating on a stove. In modern finishing, all but the simplest designs are measured out and drawn or tooled on a thin paper template. On the left are handle letters heating on a finishing stove, and on the right are title templates. Once the title is spaced and aligned correctly, you proceed to tooling the leather. The paper template is then positioned on the cover and heated tools are pressed through. The paper is removed and the blind impressions are again blinded in. This sharpens and deepens the impressions and, if gold is to be used, provides a smooth, flat surface for the metal. In the traditional method of gold tooling, after the lettering or design is first blinded in, an adhesive, called glare, is applied to the impressions. Strips of gold leaf are then laid over the impressions and held in place temporarily with a thin film of Vaseline. The board in this image is a plaquette, a leather-lined board used for practicing. 
On the left, you see the blind impression of the title, which is then overlaid with gold leaf. After tooling, the gold leaf is wiped away, revealing the gold tooled title. Gold leaf can also be picked up directly by the heated tool and then pressed permanently into place onto the leather. This completed binding was done in the traditional 16th century German Gothic style. It was sewn on alum tod thongs, bound with alum tod leather, and decorated with blind tooling. This completed binding was done in the traditional Cambridge style, an English style of bookbinding. Books bound in this style were sewn on raised cords covered in calfskin with a sprinkled central panel and a plain rectangular frame. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Hagley History Hangout. We release a new episode weekly. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hagley's own research page, hagley.org backslash from home.